Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Michael Fiore. I'm CEO and founder of Inspire to Inspire, as well as a partner with the Sober App. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank the opportunity for being able to have my voice be heard, you know, let the world know that uh, who we are and what we did are two different things. You know what I'm saying? We're able to show the world that us addicts are more than just people that use drugs, that we're, we're people at mm-hmm. the end of the day. So your platform, I appreciate you guys for the invite. Um, one thing I do like to do, I have a creed that I wrote for my uh, nonprofit. I usually like to start off with it. So if you don't mind, I'd like to Go read it, it real quick. Go for it. So we, we, uh, we choose to be strong. Nothing will disturb our peace of mind. We choose to be a healthy example to every person we meet. We choose to look at the brighter side of life regardless of the negative situation we are in. We choose to think of, we think only of the best, to work for the best and expect only the best. We choose to be enthusiastic about the success of others as well as ourselves. We choose to forget the mistakes of the past and the press on to the greater achievements of our future. We choose to wear a kind face at all times and give every living creature we meet a smile. We choose to give ourselves time to the improvement of ourselves and not time to waste on criticizing others. We choose to be noble, to be too large for worry, to be greater than anger, to be stronger than fear, and to be resilient against the presence of trouble. This is what I choose. Nice. And I use the word choose in there a lot because everything in life is choice, right? Mm-hmm. You know, the choices we make dictate the lives we live, to quote Shakespeare. But um, as far as my qualifications go, um, I don't really talk about my past as far as the war story. I lost, game over. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't glorify it. The past is there for a reason. It's very valuable. It's abstract. It's a blueprint to be successful in the future. So I refer to it. I don't live in it. Mm-hmm. But um, my father was a heroin addict. He shared needles, got HIV. He died of AIDS in 09. He, uh, my mother contracted the virus from him um, because of that and multiple cancers that she beat. She wound up becoming an addict herself to, you know, medic- um, pills and what have not have you. My choice of drug is opiate and cocaine. Um, I'm actually still living in a treatment facility at the moment. Wait, I'm blind where, detox. where are you from? I'm from Brooklyn, Brooklyn, You've, New York. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah, I tell me the accent might give it away. But um, I'm also 38. You know, I was on methadone for about 12 years. I just detoxed off it. I was high as 140 milligrams. If you guys don't know what methadone is, I'll give you the street term for it. They call it liquid handcuffs. Um, let me, let me ask you, you get, something. Can you yeah. explain? Can you explain what a blind detox is? So a blind detox, basically, every morning you wake up, you go to the the medical staff, they're giving you the methadone, but they're not telling you how they're decreasing your dose. Mm -hmm. So every time you go to the window, you don't know how much you're being brought down. You don't know what the number of your dose is. They do that to mess with the psych, Mm -hmm. you know, of of the mind and everything. But when you're off, they mix it with placebo. So when you're actually off, they don't tell you for another two weeks. So you've been getting placebo for two weeks. So when they do tell you, you, you know, the withdrawals start happening, but you don't realize it's mind over matter at that point because you've been off for two weeks already. Mm-hmm. So where was the sneezing? Where was the yawning? Where was the body extent? It, it just shows you to come how powerful our mind is mm-hmm. and how we are actually victim to our own brain. Now, you know me, what I'm saying? Let me we, ask you something. Did you, expe- did you experience that? Yes, 100%. Yeah? I mean, I went I went four months without sleep. Four, when I say no sleep, uh, if you're an addict, you know what I'm talking about. You know when you go and do your little withdrawal, you don't know mm-hmm. if you're sleeping five minutes or five hours. Mm-hmm. You get off, off the bed, you go to the couch, from the couch to the floor, from the floor to the chair. You know, it was those sleeps and the anxiety was due to, um, I just made six months on the 3rd of, um, Congrats, of May. Man. Congrats. Man. Thank you. Congrats. Thank you. So uh, six months off of the methadone. Last time I used to get high was June 12th, the day before I came into uh, treatment. You know, we all go for that last hurrah before we go into treatment. But yeah, so um, I guess as far as the, the the drug use goes, listen, I did everybody what everybody else did. We robbed from people that we didn't want to rob. We we schemed, you know. The, what, one of the things I learned while being in treatment and, you know, losing my mother on Thanksgiving after just being drug free for three weeks is that our addiction is nothing more than a trickster. It's a magician, right? And what I mean is when you go to a... a 
circus or whatever, and there's a magic trick. Like, I know there's two people in the box. You're not soaring one person in half. Mm. So therefore, that trick has no more value to me. What I realize is that I understand how my addiction speaks to me in my own voice, mostly through journaling. Like, mm. I'm a big, a big advocate for journaling. Anger journal, personal journal, gratitude journal. So when I wake up and I don't feel like I have anything to be grateful for, I go to my gratitude journal and I go back a few days and I read it. When I wake up or I had dealing with something that might have got me angry in the moment, I go to my anger journal and I see, you know what, it's not that deep. Look how much I've already been through. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like the journaling for me was so important because for me, honesty was the only way that I'm, I'm starting to really have success in recovery. Mm. And the easiest way to get honest, it's not that easy to get honest with somebody else, but it is honest to write it down. Yeah. Because you're by yourself, you know, you know, the judgment, the fear of judgment, all that kind of stuff, you know, especially early in recovery where we doubt ourselves, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And throughout this process, what what's helping me, I don't keep the same company no more. And when I say company, I think a lot of people think the people around you. It's not the people I'm talking about. What I mean is confusion and complaining were my companions. Doubt was my advisor. Misery was my motivation. Ego was my illusion and pride was my destruction. That was the company I always kept. Therefore, no wonder every time I moved a location or I moved different friends, I would always get back to the drugs because I never changed the proper company around me. And they say you're the average of the five people around you. Well, make you be the average of those five, six things I just meant, you're not going to have a good success rate in anything that we do. Mm -hmm. So what treatment has allowed me to do was, you know, I, I used to think it was a prison sentence, but in order to have something you never have, you have to do things you've never done. So when I came to treatment this time, what haven't I tried yet? What haven't I done yet? Because it's not starting over. It's starting anew if you learn from your experiences. And you only have to get something right once. Everything else before it was progress. So, like, I started looking back and change is inevitable. There's certain things that are inevitable that we can't change. So I don't try to change them. I try to manipulate them because I'm a massive manipulator. I'm an addict. We're great at that shit. <laughs> so I try to manipulate the inevitable or, better word, influence the inevitable to have you know some kind of success with it so change is inevitable it's the only thing that's permanent in life so instead of changing the past i made it building for the future it what, sounds sexy it's easier you, to do what made you make that change though what made you to come to the conclusion that you say you know what enough's enough i'm not doing this anymore and then seek help um i i I wanted to do more than just exist in this world. I wanted to be alive. I wanted to live. Uh, my where, mother was dying. Where were you living so I, at, at the time? Like I was, I mean, I was a drug addict, so I, I wasn't self-sufficient. I, I was a 36 year old man child. I was living with my mother. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like I couldn't pay rent. I couldn't pay bills. You know, I was, I was that, I was that type of addict and it, it, I was okay with it. You know, and that's the, that's the sickness of this disease that we get so easily accustomed to like negative shit. And it just shows you how resilient, though, we are as human beings because we're able to withstand everything because this life is a lot easier to live. Not easy, easier to live than the active life of using. Yeah. I mean, just thinking about waking up and not having money and having to go get money for drugs. And it's exhausting to even think about. But what really I'm a firm believer, like, listen, I believe in God. I know some of us don't. So spirituality is the, a necessity for longevity and recovery necessity. And if you don't want it, spirituality is just your relationship with reality. What's going on around you what's your relationship with it mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be god you call higher power you call whatever you want to call if you're not spiritually connected to what's going on around you mm -hmm. you're going to take things personally you're not going to see the value in everything me it's god for me because he's the only one that could have done where I'm at and got me where I'm at because my best thinking is what was the last 20 years of using. Like when I'm the one that's making the best decisions for myself, I'm in a fucked up situation. When I keep these thoughts in between these two years, my addiction wants me to be there because it can manipulate it. And I'll show you what I mean. Like our addiction speaks to us in our own voice. You have to have something sound so fucking Gucci in your head, but then when you go to tell somebody it, you just can't get the words out. Like it just, you fumble on your words. That's 
your addiction speaking to you? So if you don't have people in your life that you could actually open up to and speak to, because we need to hear ourselves speak. That's why I love platforms like what you guys got, because our stories are our weapons of mass destruction against our disease. Mm -hmm. We all have a story that needs to be heard Mm -hmm. and it needs to be heard by another addict. Like, fuck the other people. Like, listen, if you're going to judge me on how I fall and not judge me on how I get up, then you could kick rocks Mm -hmm. because I don't need you in my life. There's seven billion people in this world. Some people are just not going to come on this ride with us. And what I realized is our stories lie in what we overcome, not what we've done. You know what I'm saying? Like who we are and what we did are two different things. And I don't even think that our addiction has to use our best qualities to keep us in its grips. And what I mean is grit, right? Grit is doing something you don't want to do, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't want to run our lives into the ground, but we did it. We need grit and recovery, though. So the same grit that we use in active using, on a different perspective, we could use in recovery because we don't always want to do recovery. This is more discipline than it is motivation. Motivation is the commitment. Consistency is the, you know what I'm saying, the discipline. There's no start without a commitment. There's no finish without consistency. Motivation. When I woke up and I had no money, I got drugs that day, one way or another, because I was motivated. We need motivation and recovery at times. Then you got determination. When my first drug dealer didn't pick up, I kept calling until I got a drug dealer to come to my house. We need determination and recovery, critical thinking. I knew what blocks I couldn't walk down because I owed people money. I knew whose bags I could skimp because they didn't weigh the shit out. You know what I'm saying? We need critical thinking and recovery. And then courage. We don't think we have courage. What do you think it takes to put drugs in your body knowing it could kill you? It's the same kind of courage that soldiers used to go to war they know they could die but yet they're still going to fight Mm -hmm. so we don't really need recovery given to us i think it's already instilled in us we need it brought out though so how do you get it brought out you get it brought out by getting around people that are doing what you're doing people that are further down the line than you are you know what i'm saying i used to want people in my life that were worse off than me Mm -hmm. so i could be like well my life ain't as worse as them so i never had a look at myself where i'm at in my recovery today i want people that are way more successful than me Mm -hmm. because i need to find my way through their way not walk this path like them because we all got a different journey you know what i'm saying but see that it's possible because we emulate what we see just Mm -hmm. like when we were infants why did we walk on two legs because whoever was raising us was walking on two legs you put that baby in the jungle with monkeys it might walk on all four that's why they you know in the meetings they say you know just keep coming back keep coming back that's the whole purpose we need to see it in order to believe it sometimes, you know, as human beings. So I like to compare it to Amazon, right? Mm-hmm. Amazon, faith and recovery, right? I compare it to Amazon. Amazon, you buy the product first. You don't get to try out the electronics. You don't get to see if the clothes fit you the way you like. You buy it. And then what happens? The product comes. If you don't like the product, you could send it back. Recovery and faith are the same thing. You have to buy into it first first Mm -hmm. when you buy into it it starts to give you the product if you don't like the product them streets ain't going nowhere them drugs ain't going nowhere the misery ain't going nowhere the chaos ain't going nowhere you could go right back to it so you have to buy into these things otherwise you'll never get the product that you want but then again you never know like trying fuck trying i don't try to do shit i'm just doing shit Mm -hmm. today i didn't try to get drugs Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying i got my drugs So we have everything we need just on a different perspective, because I can is a prison that you'll always live in. The more you say I can't, the more you meditate on the word I can't, the more that you repeat a thought, the more it becomes a belief. The more you say I can, that's your passport to success. Even if you don't believe it, keep saying it because it does manifest. And then you start seeing things around you change because the first step is the admittance. Mm -hmm. I got a fucking problem. Problem. Surrender. Surrender ain't giving up. Surrender is giving you a chance to fight, in my opinion. Definitely, man. And, and I, I want to get into uh, something that you were talking about before we started recording, which was okay. like, uh, what are you doing while in treatment? What, is, what, what, what things are happening outside of treatment while you're in treatment? While I've been in treatment, um, I started, uh, I turned my mess into a message basically. Right. Um, I started my own company, nonprofit, fully incorporated called inspire to inspire. Why the name inspire to inspire. We all have something within inside of us. 
that could help someone else on their journey. I'm a man of faith, right? So God created every single one of us with the ability to help somebody else. That's what we're here for, to help somebody else. So the more people, I'm already inspired to inspire you. So the more people I'm able to inspire to help somebody else, the more people they help and the more people they help. And then the more people then they can help me on my journey. So inspire and inspire. One of the many things it is, is that we all have something inside potential. We all have potential, but potential means we haven't done anything yet. Potential could be dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Like just because you have the potential to do something doesn't mean it's going to come into fruition if you don't put the work into it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I always knew I had potential. You know what I'm saying? And that potential would make me, you know, like my ego and pride are always, you know, that those were two of my biggest downfalls, right? Ego would make me like my my main struggle, why, why I really led to drugs. I was easily liked as a child, right? So perception, right? Perception was my first high. You know what I'm saying? How people perceive me, people like me. That was my high. I was popular. So as I got older, I wanted everyone to be my friend, but there's a quote, a friend of everyone is a friend of nobody. You can't be everybody's friend. In order to be everyone's friend, I had to manipulate and lie mm -hmm. and become whatever it was I thought you liked. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you thought I had something, I didn't have it, I was cool with it. If you thought I did something, I didn't do it, I was cool with it. Because what you thought about me was more important than what I thought about myself. Because I seen value in everything else but myself. So therefore I had to be better at whatever it was that you were good at because I seen that people liked you. So what happened in that process was I looked in the mirror one day and I didn't know who I was looking at. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was just like, I remember the date clearly. I stopped looking in the mirror for like a year. So the ego, what the ego allowed me to do was be okay with you knowing things about me that weren't true. As long as you thought about it, I was cool with it. So the drugs allowed the ego to come into fruition. Pride would come in and be like, listen, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? You get off drugs, whatever you want. Don't worry about it. You're not an addict. You know what I'm saying? So the drugs really led me to always be fighting the man in the mirror and the man within. So I was at peace with my addiction and at war with the world. Recovery, I'm at peace with the world and I'm at war with my addiction. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm the predator in my recovery. I'm not prey to my addiction. I meet myself at the doors. I don't wish for triggers not to come. I don't wish for cravings not to come because by wishing for that and they come, we feel like we're losing. Triggers and cravings means we're winning mm -hmm. because the resistance only comes when you're doing something good in your life. When I was a full-blown drug addict, living in a car underneath the bridge, I had no resistance because I was, I was living the life the devil wanted me to live. Once the thought would come in my head to clean my life up, that's when the resistance came. Fixed mindset. I'm too old to do this. Uh, I, I've never done it right before. What's the, who cares? Nobody cares anyway. You know what I'm saying? That's when those thoughts will come. Only when I wanted to do better. So understand that I stopped making recovery a right or wrong thing. You know what I'm saying? When you make something right or wrong, every move is critiqued. Am I doing this right? Am I doing this wrong? So you're never fully processing. You're never at ease. Recovery has allowed my mind and my soul to work together now. You know, they say we don't become the people we were before drugs because we were still addicts. I agree with that. But I don't say I'm broken neither. I don't like that word. Broken, when something's broken, it can never be put back whole again, right? Recovery has allowed me to become whole again. And what I mean is I don't need to be fixed. I needed healing. You know, so I'm not broken. I needed healing, uh, anxiety, depression, all those things. You need healing from that. You can't fix those things. So like our self-talk is the program that we install into our computer, which is the brain. You know what I'm saying? So how you speak to yourself about things is what's the first thing I used to say when I woke up in the morning was fuck another day. So of course that theory is going to get proven right throughout the day. Those mm -hmm. are my first thoughts. You know what I'm saying? So like now my, my first thing is thank you. And I don't think for anything specific, I just say thank you. You know what I'm saying? Because I stopped making it a right or wrong thing and I made it a fall and get up thing. When you make something a fall and get up thing, that's how you start building your own willpower, your own self-esteem, your own self-respect. It's like Rocky and Rocky Four. Remember Dolph Lundgren kept Drago, kept knocking him down. He kept popping up. 
Drago got discouraged because he couldn't knock him out. When you keep popping back up, you start making your addiction discouraged. You know what I'm saying? Because now he knows he can't get you. Mm -hmm. But when you keep popping back up, what happens is you start falling forward in life. It's like walking uphill, right? Life, recovery. It's an uphill fight. We're always going to be going up, right? But when you're walking uphill, you should be leaning forward when you're walking. So when you trip, you fall forward me trying to make life easy was me trying to take life and go downhill with it and by when you go downhill and trip what happens you fall you break your ass you roll over and you keep going yeah, just, so yeah, just like jack and jill jack and jill 100 <laughs> percent. so what i mean by fall forward is when you make a mistake you find the lesson, you see the blessing, you move on from it because life is a test. We all know mm -hmm. this, right? But life's a test on how bad you want the things you say you want. But life is not like a test in school, though. You don't get the lesson and then the test in life. You get the test and then the lesson. So life is more like a pop quiz. Pop quiz, you're not supposed to pass. Pop quiz is so to show you what you need to work on for that semester, yeah. where you are weak. So mm -hmm. we're getting upset that we're not passing these pop quizzes when the, the success is learning the lesson after failing the test. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is where my perspective comes in. Everything is related. There's no such thing as failure to me. Because even if I don't succeed at what I'm doing, there's something I can learn and what happen that can make me go because love and hate it's the same passion just on a different perspective that's why they say you can love to hate and you can hate to love that's why some people could love this and some people could hate the same thing you love it's a different it's just on a different but it's the same passion just on a different perspective but if you hate yourself you hate the world mm -hmm. if you love yourself you love the world loving yourself is difficult i get it it means that we're willing to make a commitment to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it's scary to think that we're the ones that are going to get us out of the darkness. You know what I'm saying? I get it because the darkness gets real comfortable. But then when you go to the light and you turn that light on, you got to look at your darkness and there's a lot there. So a lot of us turn that light back on because we don't feel like we have it in us to face it. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But the more you give up on yourself, like you don't want to, you don't want to get to your deathbed and look back. And all these dreams that you have or we have or things that we could do, they're not dreams. They're God telling us what we're capable of doing. You know what I'm saying? But he's showing us it. He's not going to give us it. Like I used to get upset with God and I stopped talking to him for a while. I didn't feel like I was worthy enough to speak to God because I always said in them foxhole prayers. You know, only when I was down and out. And I needed some. I, I talked to God. God, please get me out of this situation. I promise you I'll stop doing drugs. As soon as I get out of the situation, I'm already going to the next cop. So I didn't feel like I was worthy enough to speak to God for a while. And But if we don't pray, how does he answer our prayers? So what I realized is when I ask God for certain things like wisdom, guidance, courage, and strength, and this will wrap into the inspired and inspire, he don't snap his fingers. He's going to put me through tests that's going to build the wisdom, the guidance, the courage, and the strength. I know this now. So now when I'm going through these tests, I'm even more grateful for what he's putting me through because whatever he's putting me through is actually making me a better person. Him taking my mother was a blessing. And when I say that, people look at me like I'm crazy. You know what I'm saying? She was 68 pounds. A quality of life is not that becoming. And... I don't like Mother's Day's coming. Why I don't get high over my mother's death is one, it won't bring her back. She's dead. It's, you know what I'm saying? Two, what it will bring back are feelings that have been dormant. That beast that's inside of me that's been dormant, that much, excuse the language, that he's going to come alive. You know what I'm saying? And that I don't want. And then the shame, the guilt. And plus, my addiction don't get my mother's death, dude. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I gave everything to my addiction. It don't get my mother's death. This pain, this whatever I feel, this is my mother deserves me. to. I don't mourn my mother. My addiction wants me to. I celebrate my mother. Mm -hmm. I celebrate her by how I live my life today. She walks with me in every step I take. You know what I'm saying? And I'm blessed to be able to have the time I had with her. I think sometimes when we lose people and we're grieving, all we think about is the time we're not going to have with them. That's selfish of us. Mm -hmm. That's saying the time we did have with them wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to do that with my mother. Any minute I had with my mother was enough. So now when I go through things, and this is another reason why I love God, I don't question because Success is a trigger. Now, when I have success, it's bittersweet. Like when I got my completion letter two days ago from my treatment facility, first person I wanted to call was mom. 
I wanted to hear her say, I'm proud of you. I knew you could do it. So that the happiness turned to a little bit of sadness. So now everything I have in my life that I start having success with is bittersweet. So now the ego can't come into play. See how beautiful God's wisdom is? This is why I don't question it. So now to wrap it into inspired, inspired. So I built a brand inside a treatment facility. I'm known in many parts of the world, the following. The video started at like video diaries and then it just, it, it kind of blew up. I guess, you know, people identify with what I speak and how I speak about it. I built a clothing line in here, it's sold on Amazon. It's sold out at the moment. I went on tour, first class. People flew me to Indiana, to California, spoke in uh, several facilities, high schools, jails, prisons. And you did, I'm moving. Doing this, all, and you did this, and then you still chose to, to get into treatment. I did this while in treatment. In treatment, look at that, man. And I didn't leave because I promised my mother I'd complete. You know what I'm saying? And that was a test from God. Because when I was in Cali, they, the, the, my facility let me go on this tour. You know what I'm saying? They gave me permission to travel. So when I was in Cali, my partners were getting into the sober app. My partners are out there. And as soon as I got to Cali, I was on Santa Monica Pier. I was out in public with the microphone like on the board. And you know, you got the Jesus fanatics, the one, you know, the antichrist is coming and you know, all that. I was there speaking on addiction. This is the day before the Super Bowl. I was in LA on the mic speaking about addiction because it was a little discouraging because I'm used to being invited to places and people wanting to hear me speak. Now in public, you got people heckling you. And I had to move my location a few times because people were yelling at me. They didn't want to hear what I had to talk about. And I was getting discouraged. And in that moment is where the growth comes, that discomfort. When you're in that moment is your greatest moment to break out of. And in that moment, I was like, you know what? I'm not waking up tomorrow and saying, you know what? I should have just did what I set my mind out to do that day. So I got that microphone and I spoke. And even though I felt discouraged, I said my message. I said what I had to say and I kept it moving. And in those moments are the are our greatest moments. And I think we give up on ourselves too much because pain is a tool. You know, like how do you how does a plant grow? You water it and it blossoms. Right. Plants start growing from where? From underneath ground. We have to start growing from within inside of us. And the only thing that helps us blossom is pain. We have to go through pain. We have to go through these things because if it was happiness without sadness, it wouldn't be happiness. Mm -hmm. it, it would just be whatever it was. Happiness is what it is because there's sadness in this world. You know what I'm saying? God allows the opportunity of evil because we live on earth. We don't live in heaven. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what heaven is for. But for us, we get moments of joy and why hard times last harder is because we get high on them. We don't ever give ourselves the opportunity to see when joy is always around the corner always around the corner all we have to do is just not pick up but it's we we need we want it now why i used to fail i wouldn't give up what i wanted now in the moment for what i must have tomorrow what i must have tomorrow wasn't important than the drug in the moment that's why i didn't succeed you know what I'm like and that's where things have changed like i'm willing to give up things in the moment for what i want tomorrow because today is the only thing that has any kind of value if you today's called today it's not called yesterday it's not called tomorrow yeah. what you take from yesterday it's, and today is your choice yeah. It's, it's your choice call it, at the end. They call it a, a, a present, a, the gift, because it's, it's yes. a present. Yeah, the so, yesterday's well, mystery, tomorrow's mystery, today's the gift. That's why they call it the present. So, what do you got in store from like, like after you get out of treatment? Okay, so uh, me and my partners, we have a house in California. I have about 45 facilities lined up in California to speak at. Uh, we're going to do some travel. We have an app called the Sober App. So what we did was we brought the amenities that all us addicts need into one place. PDF book, audio books, podcasts, motivational speakers, life coach, recovery coach, meditation, meal prepping, yoga, community, tracking, virtual events. We went to people that had established platforms, and this is why recovery is such a great thing when you're in recovery you're so willing to give what you got unconditionally so what we did was get people with established platforms and just brought them to the app because there's a lot of people in this world that can't say they're an addict because of their job or their family there's a lot of people in this world that live in small towns in scotland that don't have na and aa and support so what we did was able to bring recovery 
to these type of people. But at the same time, we do something called Sober Uncovered, where we tell people stories and people get to tell their stories. So it, it's still like in the early couple months, but you know what I'm saying? We're getting a lot of downloads, we're getting a lot of good feedback. So basically, we're recovery to me is a lifestyle it's a mind uh you know it's a lifestyle it's a mindset it's really not the absence of drugs you know what i'm saying because i know people in recovery that their lives are still unmanageable you know they just took the drug out they didn't work on themselves they can't keep a relationship they can't keep a job these are all tendencies of an addict you know what i'm saying or sometimes we'll substitute we'll go to something else because we're not doing our drug of choice so what i realized the opposite of addiction is connections mm -hmm. it's not recovery mm -hmm. it's not sobriety it's not it's not what do you know it's who you know in life because mm -hmm. we all know how to do this shit mm -hmm. we all know how to do it but you have to get with people that are doing it so you can do it with them you know what I'm saying? So like one of the main things we wanted to do with the app was bring connections. Mm -hmm. Like my dream is to become a motivational speaker. I want to speak all over the world and translate in different languages, sell out arenas, sell out masks. That's my dream. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what I'm going for. Because if you set limits, limits will present themselves. Mm -hmm. I don't set limits no more. The sky ain't even the limit. You know what I'm saying? Like hey, I'm going way beyond it. When they teach you to punch, they teach you to punch through your uh, opponent. They don't tell you to punch and stop on impact. So why would you stop on anything? Fight through everything. Because if you're stopping on impact, you're not going to do Maybe you get the physical clean. Maybe you get the emotional clean. But if you don't go through it and get your spirituality, you're not going to have longevity in this. Mm -hmm. And what what do you think is one way to like seek? Like oh. I, I just say because I, I get I, I get interested. We all believe in multiple pathways, and and we respect yes. we respect multiple pathways. <laughs> but there's some people that uh, are set in their ways, and they'll say, "No, this is the only way to do it." Um, and th there's no other other way. What like what would you say to people that are like closed minded like that? Well, see, people like that are like a, a fixed mindset, right? So when you have a fixed mindset, you're always going to look to prove that what you know is the only right way, right? Mm -hmm. The only way that I the best gift I gave myself was open mindedness. The fact that I could be wrong is a huge tool because the fact that I know that I could be wrong, I could learn more like a growth mindset is a passion for learning, right? Like knowledge will limit us. If you don't have imagination, whatever we know will limit us. Knowledge without imagination is like, look, I'll give you the Wright brothers. If they went on the knowledge of the world, they would have never built an airplane, but their imagination made them see that they could build an airplane. They built an airplane. And now we have jets today. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Imagination is, is needed for innovation. Your knowledge, my knowledge as an active user can never ever allow me to see the the benefits of sobriety. If my life sucked on drugs, it's going to suck without drugs because that was my knowledge at that moment. You know what I'm saying? My imagination started coming because I started seeing people in recovery. I started seeing their lives better. I started seeing the glow. So my advice to that, those people is knowledge is good, but knowledge without imagination will limit you. You will get stagnant eventually. You will get bored. You will stop growing. You know what I'm saying? You should always be looking to expand your attention. Attention mm -hmm. and focus are two different things. Attention is what's going on around us at all times. Focus is what the conscious mind is focused on. You know what I'm saying? We shouldn't be focusing on things too much. We should be focusing on the attention. We should have more attention. What I mean is the cravings and triggers. Don't focus on your trigger and specific craving. Focus on your attention of it. Why is it happening? Who are you around when it's happening? You know what I'm saying? What are you thinking about? Because the question is no longer why to think the question is how mm. how answers questions better it's not why am i an addict how did i become an addict you know what i'm saying it's not why should i be in recovery how do i get into recovery there's more answers in how than why you know what i'm saying i stopped asking myself a lot of questions that used to when they say step out of your own way i never knew what they meant like what the fuck do you mean by that what i realized <laughs> is 
Stop asking yourself who you are because you're not going to be able to answer that question. And when you don't answer that question, we start to come up with our own answers. You know what I'm saying? And we're never good to ourselves. We are our own worst critics. We speak to ourselves worse than other people speak to us. I would speak to myself in a way that if someone in the street spoke to me like that, I'd punch them in their fucking face. But it was okay for me to speak to myself like that. So therefore, other people could speak to me. Perception. How we see ourselves is how we portray ourselves. How we portray ourselves is then how we're perceived. You want people to see you better. You got to see yourself better first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can wear the nice clothes, the nice car. I know who still feels disgusting underneath the brand new clothes because I was that guy. Mm -hmm. I know the fake smile. I know what it's like to walk down the street and put your head down and not make eye contact with people. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I know all those feelings so I could see it in other people. So it's not how do I do recovery because I don't know how to do it. I know how to fuck it up though. Mm -hmm. So now I just don't do the things to fuck it up. I don't ask myself what I want because I'm selling myself short. I know what I don't want though. So I focus on not doing the things that I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because the past is there for a reason. Stop trying to change it and learn from it. Because if you can learn from your past, today is the only thing that has value, right? Living in the moment, being vulnerable, making your mistakes. It's the only thing that has value. So if you can make today better, right? Understand Understand tomorrow, today becomes the past. So check this out. You make today better, you start making your past better. You make today better, you start making tomorrow a little more promising. You make today better, you start problem solving today for future opportunities. So only thing that has any kind of value, the only thing that we can control is our work ethic in this now moment. This is all that has any kind of value. I think we put too much energy on shit that shouldn't be getting our energy. You know what I'm saying? If you want to change your past, make today better. Tomorrow, today, be here comes your past. Your past starts getting better. You know what I'm saying? Like, these are things that you really want out of life. Just stay in the moment. The best advice I've ever gotten, and it's crazy. I used to hate this shit. Take your time and go even slower. In the last six months, I got an article being written on me from the facility. In the last six months, I've been able to accomplish. If you would have told me I would have been able to do what I've done, I would have been like, that's not enough time. No way I could do that shit in six months. But when we go slow with things, what happens is, one, we don't have to repeat things. Two, we're able to process as we're moving because sometimes we have to stop mm -hmm. in order to move forward. Our addiction always wants us to be busy, though. Mm -hmm. Why? Because being busy is just another form of getting high just without the drugs. Because when you're busy, you're not able to process. When you're able to process, you're able to prepare better. Mm -hmm. When you're able to prepare better, you start to become more intelligent. When you become more intelligent, then you really start to understand what's going around you for your benefit. So everything has this is a journey, not a destination. When you make this a destination, like a girl, a job, whatever, saving money, that's your recovery. Understand when we get to a destination, what happens to us? We feel like we arrived. Look at artists, look at musicians. When they're going to the top of their mountain, they feel like they've made it. Their shit falls off. Their creativity falls off because they feel like they've made it. Recovery can never be a destination. It has to be a journey because if you make it a destination, you feel like you arrived, you lost. Mm -hmm. Your addiction got you right where it wants you but if you make it a journey you'll be kind to yourself because that's what love is love is patient and love is kind mm -hmm. love is not attachments love is not materialistic shit you know what i'm saying love is patient and love is kind for yourself be patient with your success mm -hmm. be patient with your mistakes learn from your sake be kind to yourself talk to yourself nice because my identity used to be attached to things outside of myself money, job, girl, whatever it was, right? When you make your identity attached to things outside of you that you could lose out of your control, what happens when you lose them? You lose your identity and then you're fucked, excuse the language. So my identity, my recovery identity is not the amount of days I have clean because those mean nothing. The only people with more clean time than me are people that woke up before me today. You know what I'm saying? Because today's the only thing that has, because if you make your recovery identity, those amount of days clean, say you relapse you're not going to be able to make those days up in one night mm -hmm. and if you can't make those days up in one night what are you going to do you're not going to get back on that horse you i and every other addict out there knows that we're going to say fuck it and that's what we're great at so say fuck it to the other things say fuck it yes i'm going to save my life today say fuck it yes i'm worth it today if you're going to say fuck it say it but say it in a way that's going to motivate you not a way that's going to make you regress mm-hmm
like a pot like a, in a positive way definitely yes yeah man definitely uh i i would always say that uh uh temptation never takes vacation mm. and, and it, there's always an invitation oh you know what i'm saying i like that and, and i always say you, you we need to always be prepared with stuff like that and connection is the key man like we're always we were always connected to something right but it was never nothing positive so we weren't getting no current energy that correct energy we needed so as i i've i've seen it and i speak i would speak for myself and you know and i see others as well when they get a recovery they allow themselves to um they allow themselves to be given things mm. you know what i'm saying like I, i've been allowed for great opportunities but if i wasn't here presented myself for those opportunities those opportunities would be it'll be gone man you know yeah. what i'm saying they they'll, they'll roll right by and i'll be like oh get out the way but i wanted them i was there and you're right with the whole if you don't you we don't process things and that when we're in our addiction we don't we don't care to process things right but the minute we get into recovery things start overwhelming us too you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. cuz we start noticing things it's like oh we didn't i didn't notice that before but i think being prepared and connected and using people as resources man and 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 it's worked it's worked for me um I'm going on eight years, but I've been working uh, for C Car going on five this this month. Um, God willing, and I, I just say, man, I allowed myself. I wanted it right, and I allowed it to happen. Yeah. So one hundred percent, and and the the lost opportunities, so called lost opportunities in the past, the opportunity was losing those opportunities. They're not, you know what I'm saying? Like I look back now, all those lost opportunities, God hears and sees things that we don't hear and sees things we don't see. So when something's removed out of your life, you should be thanking him, not cursing him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because he he's, maybe there's someone in your life that's going to hold you back. Like my loyalty has an expiration date. Like, and I don't mean to sound horrible. If you're not moving the way I'm moving my energy, I'm real protective of it. I don't get in certain conversations. I don't watch television because that should have fuck your head up. You know what I'm saying? But that's just me. That's just my personal recovery. But like, I'll always leave the door open for you to come back in my life because people allowed me back in their life. Mm -hmm. So that would make me a hypocrite not to do that. Mm -hmm. But you have to show me that your energy has changed, just like I had to show people my energy changed for them to come in my life. But when you get protective of your energy, you start to appreciate your energy. That's why they say you got to give it to keep it. When you give something that you've earned to somebody else, you appreciate the journey it took you to get there. Mm -hmm. And then you get to see your hard work coming to fruition and then that's why you give it because you have to be willing to lose something in order to be able to hold on to it mm -hmm. because if you're playing this game not to lose you're gonna lose you know what i'm saying it's like football when they play that prevent defense they lose or a boxer you got them on the ropes you don't back up you go in for the kill mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like sometimes we have to go in for the kill if you're playing this hoping shit ain't gonna happen to you it's gonna happen to you play this in times of peace you prepare for war they say right mm -hmm. and in times of war you pray for peace so what i understand from that is when life is going good, understand life on life terms is going to come one mm -hmm. way or another. Oh, yeah. So I start to mess with my daily routine a little bit because I'm an addict. I have an addictive personality. I could get addicted to my personal routine, even if it's healthy. So what happens if I get addicted to a healthy routine and something happens and something's taken out of my daily routine, it's going to fuck me up. It's, I'm not going to be at equilibrium. So what I do is I start removing things little by little on its own just to deal with the anxiety of it, just to see what happens, how I feel when something's removed out of my life because I'm at peace right now. But that doesn't mean more is not coming though. Mm -hmm. It's coming. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I have to prepare myself. You got to get strategic in this. This mm -hmm. is chess. It's not checkers. You know what I'm saying? So understand whatever it is that you are hooked on to, understand that's your weakest link. Mm -hmm. Because if it's removed out of your life, where are you going to be then? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like I said before, who we are and what we do are two different things. You could be a doctor for your profession. That doesn't make you who you are. You know what I'm saying? Like, we've done drugs. Does not make us pieces of shit. Everyone out there is fucked up, man. Everyone has something that they're dealing with. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So what, what, where I'm getting is who we are should make us better at what we do. Uh -huh. Not what we do make us who we are. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Because whatever happened to me in these last 20 years is the reason I am the person I am today. It's the reason why I love myself today. It's the reason why I'm able to reach so many people with my words because I had to live the life. You can't say I understand what you're talking about if you didn't live this life and you're not going to be able to fool an addict. Mm -hmm. We know. We know. You know what I'm saying? Just by the how you speak and what you speak on and how deep you get in with the darkness. So, like, I appreciate everything. Like, people's words can't hurt me. My reaction to them words is what hurts. So, like, I'm starting to realize all the power that is inside of me. And it's a beautiful thing because being alone and lonely are two different things. I was lonely in a room full of people a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? But being alone, if you could be with yourself, be your best friend, be your hero, be your biggest fucking cheerleader... It's crazy. People start finding you to become those people in your life. Yeah. But when you aren't that person for yourself, those people don't find you because like you were saying, energy is radiant. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't realize the energy we're giving off. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you feel inside, people feel it. People see it. People don't want to be around it. And the people that do want to be around it are just going to bring you down even more and make you hate yourself. Mm -hmm. Like now that I, I used to need you to believe in me in order for me to believe in me, I used to need you to fix my problem so when they didn't get fixed i could blame you because i didn't want to fix it myself now that i believe in myself in my dream and my vision i god is putting people on my path left and right to move me along on my path and that's what happens when you start doing his will there's no stopping you because we get it from the source mm -hmm. so you ain't gotta be well we're protected at the end of the day if you look at your life in the past look at all i should be dead 30 times over at least yeah but i'm here so, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're protected. Find the little things, man. Find the little, because if you can't appreciate what's on your plate, you're never going to appreciate anything else. Because if you could appreciate what you have, life will give you what you want. Where can people find, where can people find uh, the more information on, on, your, on the, the clothing okay. so, and the uh, Inspire to Inspire? Yeah, so Instagram, the handle is Mike, M-I-K-E, Fiore, F-I-O-R-E, 118. Uh, on TikTok, it's Inspire, the number two, Inspire underscore. I'm going to be checking you your, your stuff out, and I, I'll share. I, I, me, myself, I, um, as a recovery coach, man, I, I love to be a resource to people, and I love to share resources with people. So thank I, I thank you, man. It's an honor. Yeah, to likewise. I do want to thank Recovery Matters for having myself inspired, inspired, a sober app, you know, having us here and being able to just get the message out there. As long as one person hears it, I'm happy, man. Definitely, man. Definitely. Well, it's a pleasure, man. Take care of yourself, man. All right, man. Thanks, guys. All right.